Hello, today we'll be talking about the two types of hypervisors and their importance in the networking field. My name is Daniel and I am a student of computer networking. My interests are in learning about the latest up-to-date technologies and I have recently became interested in the cloud. One of my hobbies include enjoying the outdoors, but those activities are hiking and sightseeing. Currently, I am an intern at Virtually Testing, learning more about computer networks in general. Today, my agenda is talking about hypervisors and the two common types, type 1 and type 2. We're going to be discussing about why they are important and how they are still in popular use today. In my next two videos, I will demonstrate installing VMware's type 1 and type 2 hypervisors. Well, what is a hypervisor? A hypervisor is a virtual machine manager. Virtual machines give the possibilities for users to emulate a separate computer with a variety of operating systems to experiment with. So the purpose of a hypervisor is to control central management in an application that allows the allocation and distribution of resources across virtual machines. This is why it is important for virtual machines to interact with hardware. There are two types of virtual machine managers that we'll be discussing today, and those are type 1 and type 2 hypervisors. Let's begin with some system requirements. To get the basic requirement, we need a CPU with at least two cores that can enable virtualization, 4 gigabytes of RAM, more than 25 gigabytes of storage space to allocate space to a virtual machine, and a network interface card to help install and update the operating system. Of course, more is better, but these are the minimum requirements. So type 1 hypervisors are also called bare metal or native hypervisors, and these offer much better performance because there are only three layers to the design instead of the four layers that type 2 hypervisors have. Type 1 hypervisors also are independent of operating system, and its main purpose is to host multiple virtual machines at once. It begins with the physical hardware layer, then onto the hypervisor itself that is directly installed on the server. Then from the hypervisor, you can use it to host multiple operating systems. Some free open source type 1 hypervisor software we can install directly with the physical server are Microsoft Hyper-V, KVM, VMware ESXi, which in the next video I will provide a demo of its installation, and finally Send. These software are available to download from the internet. So what are these hypervisors used for? As previously mentioned, they are used to host more virtual machines. For businesses, they supply mission-critical applications and workloads to ensure continuous uptime of their installation. This makes them popular in the industry for enterprise use as a whole. These are favored over Type 2 hypervisors because of their direct interaction with hardware components, making it a more smooth and quick access to the system resources. Finally, when configuring the virtual machines in Type 1 hypervisors, you must enable the static IP address option to ensure known connections to the hypervisor. This is an example of Microsoft's Hyper-V Type 1 hypervisor console. Here you will be able to create virtual machines and manage their settings. This is VMware's ESXi Type 1 hypervisor in its Web Application Access Manager. Now moving on to Type 2 hypervisors, which are also called hosted hypervisors because it depends on the host machine's operating systems to manage calls to the CPU, memory, storage, and all the available network resources. These Type 2 hypervisors attract individuals who want to explore and develop and test on another operating system. Now onto the design of Type 2 hypervisors. It begins with the hardware, and then the host operating systems like Windows 10 Home, Mountain Lion Mac OS, or Ubuntu Linux. On these operating systems, you can install virtualization software that can create more virtual machines. Two free commonly used virtualization software are VMware Workstation and Oracle's VirtualBox. From these hosted hypervisors, you would be able to create more virtual machines. The first one can be CentOS, the second one can be Ubuntu, and the third can be Windows 10. You can create a more as you need, but you have to keep in mind the limits of your system resources. So what are these Type 2 hypervisors used for? Their main purpose is supplying another operating system for the basic user. The main target are testers and developers. By being installed on top of the original host operating system, these virtual machines are easier to manage because they do not need additional software packages to manage these virtual machines. This is a VMware Workstation Console, where you can create new virtual machines and manage the existing ones. This is Oracle Box VirtualBox, 
Type 2 Hypervisor Management Console. As you can see, there are currently six virtual machines, all being powered off. To recap, today we talked about what a hypervisor is and why they are useful. Then we went on to discuss what a Type 1 and Type 2 hypervisors are and the type of different softwares that are free to download and use. In my next two videos, I will demonstrate how to install virtual machines on Type 1 and Type 2 hypervisors. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.